So you look van. You yes. fa I hear I hear I well I heard from you that you've had a long career in the health field and we happen to be in the middle of a pandemic right now. What do you know about pandemics? I know that uh, <laughs> when you said that I used to tell my sister about it and one time she came up to visit me at work. Mm -hmm. She said, do you call this a job? Because all I picked up was a test tube and a needle mm -hmm. and slide, load up the blood and put it on the machine mm -hmm. and look in the mercy cup. Mm -hmm. She said, that's not no job. My sister was a, she worked for General Motors when she was working about 45, 50 some years. So she was a laborer. Yeah. So if you wasn't a laborer, then you, <laughs> you, wasn't, you didn't have a job. Okay. I she guess. said, this is no job. That ain't nothing. You ought to be shaming yourself. I said, they ain't paying me enough. I said, they need to look at me and pay me for what I know, but not what I do. Mm. I said, I didn't take this job to be no instructor. I didn't take this job to be a supervisor. I took this job to be solely responsible for the work that I do. Mm. I was forced into being a supervisor. I was forced into being a teacher. Oh, well, hold on, Ms. Dula. I, I don't. I, I got you. I don't want to stop the story, but you don't seem like the kind of person to be forced to do anything. No, it's a lot of things when your director of the lab come tell you. I was under the impression I told when I got hired at that job. See, I did not apply for that job. Mm -hmm. A doctor to ask me would I come work for him. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, Bill, and I, now I had tried when I got out of school to work for DePaul because I heard that was the best hospital in the city of St. Louis. Mm -hmm. But when I went to apply after I graduated from school, they told me they had not had an opening in 15 years. Was that, was that the truth or was that because you... No, you, that was the truth. Mm, that was the mm, truth. Yeah. Uh, it was some about um, the character of the hospital. They, when I first went there, I got good raises. Back in... 75, I got a 7 or 8 percent raise. I got a, a cost of living raise and a 7 or 8 percent annually raise. Ooh, those days are long gone. They long gone. Mm. No more. That's all I had to do was do my job and they would pay me for, for being there. Huh. I had good health insurance. Um, Another insurance policy, if it had happened to me, you know, I, my daughter would have got $99,000. <laughs> now you're counting. But, but I don't want to speed this along, but I want to know about this pandemic. We're in an emergency situation. We're in an emergency situation, and people do not listen. What should they be listening to? They're, they're trying to they listen to the politicians and the people and the, and the bureaucrats. Who, who should they be listening to? Maybe I should ask that. They shouldn't be listening to no dummy that don't wear no mask or say it's not that he, when he know himself, he get tested every day. Are they getting tested every day? Mm -hmm. I mean, please, get asked some questions. Are you, are they surround people that carry the virus? No, they not. Those people's up there in Washington, D.C., they get tested every day. They have better health insurance and everything better than any poor person. They got to understand the basic of how you get, how a virus work. A virus work by a cough or sneeze, you inhaling it, they done already told you to wear a mask right over your nose, over your mouth. Because those particles are microorganisms. Come through your, 
If they were bigger than a microorganism, they wouldn't get up in your nose or your mouth. Don't be no dummy. They done told you microorganisms floating in the air. And with this virus, I say it's man-made, I don't know if it's not, but I feel like it is. They have never had a virus in history like this virus that can live on the surface. And people, some people in certain areas go around just sneezing and coughing on you so you can get it. And you can't tell me they don't understand. They understand what's going on, but they evil. Hmm. But isn't this part of a, a, isn't this part of almost like the culture? I know that in Japan, they're used to being courteous. I mean, if, in the, just the regular times, if they had, somebody has a cold, they wear a mask all, all, all the while. Not for themselves, but just so they don't spread it to somebody else. But they have that... Already, so when this comes along, they just put a mask on automatically, just be courteous. Well, you don't, are you trying to say Americans are not courteous? <laughs> what, what? You know what, when I first, when I first took a, took, before when I was working, and I was working as a seamstress, I had my own shop, my own little business, and I was doing sewing. The American peoples are so rude and disrespectful. And I found that out when I got hired at the Paul Hospital. I was raised to be polite, courteous. I would go to work, good morning. Nobody would open their mouth. Hmm. Nobody would say good morning to you. No matter how, when I entered that doorway, and it was a, our lab was about from here over to the end of my house, with machines going all the way up and down and around. Good morning, hello, good morning everybody. And one time, I, one day, I remember just very clearly, I must have been had a bad day. It was a lot of days I wasn't feeling good because I was stressed out. My director came into my lab, my area, and she called out everybody named but mine. Good morning, Jimmy. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. Dear. And I it walked out. Now, I'm, I'm 4'11", 125 pounds, so I know she see me. And I waited until she got to that door and I called her back. And I asked her, they say I had a mean streak. I said, Judy, are you being disrespectful? Oh, wh what you mean? I said, did you see? Oh, yes, I saw you. I said, that's what I thought. That's why I called you. I said, now you call out everybody's name in this lab and say good morning to them, but you never did call my name and now you can walk out the door she said, ah, ah. I said, no, go on out the door. You know I got called in the office. Well, do you think this is because, uh, I mean, I guess St. Louis is up south or what, what the deal is? But I mean, even people, south some people, are, some people, they are raised different than the southern folks. I found that out. My mother would always get up in the morning and say good morning to her children, good evening, a good day. And I got a lot of look, hugs, a lot of hugs. Mm -hmm. And then from talking in the, uh, the latest conference room, the conference room at work, a lot of people, they, they didn't get that. My mother would never send her children to bed without dinner. Never. She did not play that. Mm. Well, let, let, me, let me ask you this, because again, you, you had about a 50 year career in, in the, health, um, the health situation. I'm gonna put it that, I don't wanna say the industry, but the health situation. And that means that you was here in the time of Ebola. Ebola that was a, 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 a big thing. What was happened, what was happened with, with, with the Ebola thing? If, you know what? Like I say, they built a special lab at the Paul Hospital to bring the patients, whether they came on the plane or wherever they was, if they got off or came to the airport, 
Our house pill was the number one house pill they brought them to. I guess with Congress and the Senator, they got together and they had one site mm -hmm. to bring the patients to. And this virus, we had to have a special hood with the air vent that you had to inoculate it. Any specimen you get up on the hood, we had to have, oh, and the good part about it, they got a raise mm -hmm. for working in that lab. I didn't sign up for it. I didn't want it. I was too old. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. And 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 they did it fairly. Oh, let me put this. Yeah, Can you put? I put it in the. You gonna put it in the refrigerator? I didn't. Mm -hmm. I forgot all about that. You gotta check on the fish too. Oh, James can do it. Yeah, sure. He can, he can cook. <laughs> and uh, this. What I was talking about, the Ebola. Yeah, the, yeah uh, basically, they were set up for, for Ebola. Yeah, it was it, the, set up for, and I didn't, we didn't but get But the only thing even if they had, even if for this particular uh, pandemic, as they're calling it, this, this, this uh, 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 corona, whatever, uh, thing, if they had the hoods, that would still bring the, the thing out into the air. So no, they, they it wouldn't. Do, no, it huh? wouldn't. Uh-uh. The hoods are not made like that when you have to work up on the hood. The hood come down, so you got a chair, and there's a little opening there, mm -hmm. and you can't push that hood up, it mm -hmm. locks. Mm -hmm. And if you try to push it up, all kind of alarm will mm -hmm. go off. It, will, it was a safety device. Mm -hmm. And what you do, you put your arms through it, you have on your gloves, you have your have head and everything. You're totally PPE gear. Mm -hmm. Yo, you had head covering everything, and the only thing, even you, when you put your arms through those gears, uh, you had on safety protection. Mm -hmm. And what that hood do, when you open that specimen up, the air vent would suck everything out. It would nothing be floating around in there. Mm -hmm. so I'm saying, where would it suck it out to? I don't know why they they it wouldn't it was uh the engineer built it. Mm. So I got you. I know it's not your, it's not your field, but let's let's go on. I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to figure out uh, does that still exist? Oh, you don't know. You're not working there now. But I mean, with this pandemic that's happening, it seems not to be going away. It's going to be it's going to keep on keep on. Maybe be be another flu come along in this in the in the you fall. Know what? What's going I'm curious to see uh, what gonna happen. It's getting ready now for flu season. Mm -hmm. Flu season is getting ready. What's going to happen when you have a combination mm. of the flu and the virus, how they would interact? Mm. Already, this virus does a tremendous job on your heart, your liver, your kidney. Your whole liver go black. They didn't show pictures on TV. Mm. The after effect of somebody having coronavirus, you be fatigued all the time. Mm. Some people can't even take fatigue, and I'm not like now. I, I just got through having major surgery, and I'm not fatigued. Mm. I have a lot of energy. Mm. And quoting that, when I knew I was going to have surgery, I prepared my body, my mind, and my soul. I prayed a lot. I ate good food. And one of the things they told me, and I had a bad operation, but thank God it was no cancers. And she said, you're a healthy little thing. Maybe it's because I was eating right. I was exercising. I do water rovers three times a week for two hours mm. a day, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mm. So I don't know what it is. Mm. Uh, well, Ms. Eula, thank you so very much for talking to us. I appreciate it. Well, thank you.